Hey guys, we're back with another episode of On the Elder's Couch. We've got Dion along again today in light of, obviously, um, the Most recent meeting. Good Most news, recent yep. That's it, yeah, for the RBA. Um, the interest rates didn't go up again. No, Australia's kept a quarter break, which is good. So what that means is for another month, anyone looking to borrow money, your borrowing power stay the same. Um, a small word of the warning, a few banks have actually been adjusting rates. I'm not gonna say who, but some rates have, they've just put them up anyway. It's not the full 0.25% or something like that like you would usually see with a um, standard RBA rate rise, but some are making certain things, certain adjustments. I think they are allowing for more the fixed terms and some you'll, you'll see some interesting factors there. So I was on the phone this morning to one of the banks and um, we talked about it on a previous episode where there'll be the cash rate set by the RBA or the interest rate that's advertised to you, but the buffer rate they apply on that for serviceability might be 2-3%. Um, one of the banks now, their five-year fixed rate is actually, that is the buffer. So that's it. So you, you only have to service 5 point whatever percent that is of, on a five-year fixed term without, without adding the 3% buffer there. So that's actually opened up serviceability to a lot of customers like that come to my mind at the moment where serviceability was just short because of these recent rate rises. There's now a huge drop in serviceability on that factor of that five-year fixed term. I guess on the assumption that in five years time rates would like to hopefully think they're going down but you know I'm not saying anything yeah <laughs> um, but uh but I think that's their reasoning there on how they view responsible lending but whilst it seems kind of boring that the rate hasn't changed almost there's um, there's things happening in the background that is now making it easier for lending to, to happen on that fixed term basis yeah awesome okay so yeah. pretty much like if there's more people meeting serviceability and that sort of stuff now i mean there's going to be more buyers in the market obviously 100 um so yeah. for a seller yeah i mean that's awesome like there's more competition between buyers I mean that just drives the prices up yeah i mean for for 10 months straight everyone's borrowing power was just taking a hit it was just going down and down and down you know i had customers where you know, they could have bought for a couple hundred grand more last year than, than what they can today. And, you know, I've got people refinancing who, who you know, the, the fixed rate is turned variable. It's a pretty high rate and they just want to refinance to a sharper rate and they can't service the debt. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. But now there is the opportunity for that to, to go through with, with that one lender. Um, and, yeah, hopefully this kind of sets a trend for maybe a bit of easing in the future on the RBA side of things. You know, 10 rate rises immediately was pretty brutal. I get it had to happen with inflation and there's other factors there. And I agree and disagree with somewhat of it. But, yeah, it's good to see that it's we've caught a break. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Positive no, thing. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was good news, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so for those i suppose who don't understand like the the full effects on borrowing power per se so if six months ago someone could borrow a million dollars what's their basically yeah what can they borrow now um with our calculator in front of me i couldn't tell you specifically but it's, it's quite a few hundred thousand dollars under yeah right okay now, yeah yeah um like i said you just take the rate out of three percent buffer onto it and that was the serviceability rate so with each rate increase that was just going up and up and up and up so you had to service a lot more um a lot more debt there with that and that was the same you know if you have a personal loan chances are if you're in a variable rate your interest rate went up on the personal loan too so we look at your payments there those also would have gone up which would also decrease your borrowing power there because your commitments have gone gone up um so yeah, to give you exact dollar figure, I can't off the top of my head right now without. Yeah, no, I got, I got, there's multiple yeah. calculators for different banks and different policies and stuff. But yeah, we're talking a few hundred grand hits. Yeah. So quite yeah. a big dent, especially when you know what fifty thousand dollars difference could be in a purchase price. You know, it can, oh, I assume yeah, it could definitely. take from one suburb to another almost. Um, so yeah, that's a big yeah, it's a big hit. So it's good that everything's kind of flat line a bit for a month it's giving everyone that little extra you know people looking around and i know i think stock is an issue so it's hard for the buyers to find what they're looking for yeah yeah definitely um not just us but talking to a few other sort of agents around the area as well and i definitely um bring properties to the market is something that's definitely come back a lot yep. um but yeah like we've we've got a few coming um so i think i think people are starting to see that 
there is still a lot of competition out there between buyers. Yep. Um, like I, I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I can tell you what happened yesterday. And I can tell you what's happening right now. Yeah. All I can say is basically, right now is is the the best time to sell. Well, yeah, that's it. And um, well, are we seeing like I can see the the, the like, you know, I'm, I'm anti free tv doom and gloom news i just don't agree with it they don't do the research properly and they just they sell on fear but i think the, the pr prices are still going up hey just as a side note to what we're talking about because yeah it's like it, it the market definitely did come back for a bit there yep. um but obviously um again being that there's more buyers in the market they're definitely driving the prices up a little bit um yeah. again um, saw a market analysis on social media uh, I think it was yesterday. I'd be rude and quickly whip my phone out. But it's just, it, it actually, I found that quite interesting what I saw. Um, so for the suburbs of the Redlands, I bet I can't find it now. Definitely won't be able to find it now. That's the way it goes. Eh? Murphy's Law, right? Ah, oh, every time. But there was a good market update and it, and it split up the Redlands by each suburb. And uh, it gave us a really good um, look at like each like with each suburb what increase there was for for those suburbs. Yeah, I think it was like almost in like fifteen percent. Cleveland had like uh, maybe it was like maybe like four or five percent of Cleveland and stuff like that. So it's good to see that the area is still developing quite well, which is good. Um, yeah, good for the current homeowners, obviously. For the buyers out there, that is a you know probably bad news, but. I still see that as healthy, I suppose. You don't yeah. want to be operating in an area or looking in an area where it's declining, so. Exactly, yeah. And I think on the like Just investing shows. side of things, yes, Redlands is such a good place to invest in at the moment. Like, I think uh, Redland Bay, for instance. I mean, oh, you've got the Shoreline Estate going in down there. Insane growth, which is, you know, so, like, and I get like some people are for and against it, but um, I think it's good to see that Redlands has its like its merits are known now. You know, when yeah. I first started, the buying decision making, the, the buyers was always close as possible to the city. You know, within that 15 kilometer radius. You know, Morningside, whatever, Nunda, Clayfield, what you know, um, Morningside, and all that kind of stuff. You know, everyone's going to be close as possible to the city. And and now, with the you know, it could be working from home. I don't know what really. You know, it could be multiple factors. I think the Redlands is one of the most beautiful areas in Brisbane. But I can see people now focusing on the lifestyle that they want, you know, the residents can provide that. We've got multiple yeah. waterfronts and, you know, traffic isn't that bad here. Um, so I think I, I can see that people are aiming for it here, but, and that obviously that's driving the price up too. So it's, yeah. it's good to see that though, um, as that's a local it. to the Redlands and a place I love. That's it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so, like new schools going in, new shopping centers going in, yeah. like in multiple different suburbs. Um, like Redland Bay's got the Wynum Creek upgrade, that's going to be huge, it's like multi-level car parks, um, yeah. apartment buildings, all that sort of stuff going in down there. There has already been apartment buildings <laughs> going down there fairly recently. Yep. Um, like completely different to five years ago. Exactly, um, yeah. And, and I think then, there's still room for the first home buyers to like entering the market here. I think there is definitely some room. Not, yeah. the, not you know, look, Wellington Point, maybe not, but it, there's still the option there for it. But I think for the current homeowners too, it's a safe buy. It definitely, it, yeah. all the investors and, even too. And if a first home buyer can get and base, well, a new build under 750. Yeah. I mean, like there's, there's so many different grants that they can apply for and that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The new financial year, we'll see a bit of a change to the grants available and we'll obviously, I'll keep you updated and we'll probably do another video to inform of that one that once that comes through and is correctly implemented within the banking system. But yeah, at the moment, I think you've touched on it before the video with, um, with Corey, what was it with Corey? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first homeowner grant and then the, um, the deposit scheme, which I think is the most popular one at the moment, the, the, the deposit scheme. So I see that everywhere and, and that works rurally too. So I know we're talking about bit out of Redlands there, but there's options rurally if people want it, which I still have those customers who, who, you know, who want to have cattle and whatever and have that kind of lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I think that's um, that's the update. That's it. Just a quick one today. So yeah. thank you guys so much, and thank you, Dion, for coming along again. I um, always love sure being we'll, here. Yeah, we'll have another video pretty soon. Excellent. Awesome. All right, mate. Thank you. Done.